Yo, what's good guys? Another video here today. We got geography now with Austria. Now listen, one of one of you guys, one one of my homies on the YouTube texted me on Instagram and was like, yo, you need to react to this. And I told him, I'll get to it. And guess what? Today is the day. We got to it. So let's do it. Hurry up. Hey. I, don't, I don't know why I had to yell, but I did. Listen, once noch Österreich comes, or once Deutsch reden, nennt es net Deutsch. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's funny. No matter how much German they speak, don't call them German. <laughs> that's Time funny. to learn geography. No! Hey, peeps, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Let's dissect the flag. The flag is one of the oldest used flags of Europe. Disputably, legend has it that the flag comes from the Siege of Acre after Leopold V came back from battle and removed his belt with his blood soaked tunic, leaving Damn. a red white banner. Keep in mind. Okay, that's that's a badass. That's a pretty badass story behind a flag. I'm not gonna lie. That the Austrian flag looks very similar to the flag of Latvia. However, the Latvian flag has unequal sized bands and is a darker shade of red. Keep in mind, many other countries in the Eastern European region, specifically the Pan Slavic areas, still retain a part or complete version of the white red pattern on their flags, like Austria. We'll explain a little bit more about this, but first, let's talk about the borders. <laughs> In terms of its location, Austria is landlocked, bordered by eight other countries, don't forget Liechtenstein, in the Central European region, with the Alps dominating three quarters of the country in the west and in the center. The country is divided into nine states, although it's kind of funny because the state of Lower Austria is technically a little higher than Upper Austria geographically. The capital and the large- Rocco, can you not? Sorry for the cut, but we are having issues, my dog, and then phone calls in the middle of videos, and just- yeah, we we gonna cut all that out. But I was about to say that's kind of that's kind of funny how the lower one is higher than the higher one, even though yeah, like why why is that a thing? Why? The largest city is Vienna, located on the eastern side of the country, where one out of every eight Austrians can be found. The city is a wonderful assimilation of centuries-old stone churches, palaces, opera houses, and monuments, as well as modern high-rises, skyscrapers, and business offices. Oh, and there's okay, dozens on, of castles. Yeah. The wonderful assimilation of centuries-old stone churches, palaces, opera houses, and monuments, as well as modern high-rises, skyscrapers, and business offices. Like, bro, they made this thing like a damn Jenga tower. Offices. Oh, and there's dozens of castles speckled throughout the entire country. Remember how in the Albania video I told you play that whole find the bunker game? Well, in Austria, it's kind of like find the castle game. As a member of the EU, Austria's borders are pretty open with all of its neighbors and are pretty much virtually invisible with the exception of the occasional river or mountain blocking the way. The only controversy it really has is in the South Tyrol region, which historically belonged to a number of different kingdoms and empires, but for a long while it belonged to the House of Habsburg, a historically fascinating lineage that would eventually play a pivotal role in providing half of Europe with all of their monarchical lineages. In short, it kind of initially belonged to Austria, however, after the Treaty of St. Germain and Lai in 1919, the entire southern part of this region was kind of reluctantly given to the Kingdom of Italy. This explains why Austria has a relatively narrow eastern parameter that stretches into the Alps, as the South Tyrol region, which previously gave the country a wider range of dominion, was ceded to Italy. Austria was kind of like, okay, Italy, we'll give you this piece of land, but, you know, just a little heads up, pretty much everybody in there is Austrian and they speak German and they kind of want to be part of Austria. But hey, it's all yours. The most confusing part of the region though would have to be the Jungholz Enclave. Located right on the border of the Bavarian region of Southern Germany, this place only has about 300 people, separated into four small towns, this area is strange because it is one of Europe's only three quadrupoint borders and is technically joined by Austria by only a small narrow corridor, only a few meters wide on the top of the adjacent Zogstrofen mountain that crosses over into the Austria side. Does that even count? Like, I'm sorry, what? Nah, listen, at that point, they might as well just be like, hey, everyone in those small towns, just, just come on over. We, we given this, we, we given this to whatever country is Germany. We, we given this little like four town plot to Germany. Like there's no point. Like what is the actual point in having, why? Like, I guess everybody gets along out there, so it don't matter, but like still, come on. That's Otherwise, so the only way to get into Austria from this region is by driving through Germany. This means that if you don't want to go through Germany to get into Austria from this region, the only way is to literally climb to the top of the Sogstrofen Mountain what? to the very point where the four borders- Okay, first off, the mountain looks awesome, but like, that's what I'm- like, why? Why not just, hey, Germany, 
Give a little bit. Yo, give him a little bit of room. Let him just have a one road. Let him, let those people in that town just have one little road. Is that too much to ask? Just or yo, Austria. Just give them the town. Like at that point, what's the <laughs> what's the point? meet and climb all the way down to the rest of Austria. Since the 19th century, the borders have been literally marked every single step of the way and the top has a mark stone that distinguishes the narrow crossing. Believe it or not, this is actually a common hike that a lot of people take despite the fact that many of them don't even understand the significance of the markers. Speaking of mountains and hikes, let's talk about the physical geography. I'm not gonna lie though, it is kind of funny to me. Like, <laughs> I, can, I can see the humor in it even though like, I don't feel like this is necessarily supposed to be a funny video like it's supposed to be educational but i find that funny as hell as mentioned before about three quarters of austria is mountainous with the alps dominating the center and western parts of the country these mountains are the characterizing segments that give austria's its distinct national identity both historically and culturally in short even though the vast majority of people in austria live in the low-lying plains around the mountains austria would not be austria without the alps these mountains can actually be quite quirky almost with minds of their own for example, every spring in the Hochschwab Mountains and forests on the east side of the Alps, the snowmelt from the mountains completely engorges the Grüner See, or the Green Lake, engulfing the entire park with trees and benches underneath it. Oh, These what? mountains That's also crazy. Time out. So you tell me, like, just a park just turns into a lake every year, and they just how do the trees survive? Like, okay, I feel like he's dramatizing it, right? Because there's no way, like, full trees just go underwater and are still alive like wouldn't the trees like drown like the hell provide the perfect setting for austria's favorite sport skiing the problem though is that although these mountains are very beautiful they do kind of make a lot of the country uninhabitable or difficult to cultivate although 40 percent of the land is covered in forests less than 20 percent of the land is arable and for the record yes the sound of music was filmed in parts of austria no not everybody has seen or even cared about seeing that movie of course the mighty danube i'm not gonna lie to y'all i've never seen that movie but you know a shout out to y'all nice movie. river flows through the northern part of the country and has historically played a vital role in Austria's economy and trade sector, especially after the construction of the Rhine-Main-Danube River Canal back in 1992, which allows ships to finally pass from the North Sea through Europe into the Balkans and ending into the Black Sea. The low-laying areas of eastern Austria have nice grassy hills and plains perfect for cattle raising and, of course, dairy production, where some of the classiest Austrian cheeses are produced. Now, of course, Austria's economy is not really that heavily based on agriculture, but rather services and industry, specifically in engine and and medication manufacturing. But who does all the manufacturing? Let's find out in demographics. <laughs> you know, as the home country of Mozart, Austria still kind of lives up- Time out, time out, I didn't know that. Mozart's from- that's crazy. I didn't know where he was from, but I didn't know he was from there. To its classy expectation. Austria has a population of about eight and a half million, about 90% of whom are ethnically Austrian and 10% from other nations, mostly from- Damn, damn, y'all just don't be going nowhere. Y'all just be like, nope, nope. We Austrians, we stand in Austria, that's our place. <clears throat> Germany and the former Yugoslavian states such as Hungary, Serbia, and Bosnia with an influx of Turkish people having immigrated over the past few decades. The reason why there are so many Eastern Europeans in Austria has somewhat to do with the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Habsburg dynasty, which was one of the most pivotal monarchies that shaped the entire course of European history in every corner from Spain to France, England to Russia, and so on. The Habsburgs even took over Mexico for a short period of time. That's how powerful these people were. Damn. Yes, Austrians speak German. However, rule number one, do not call them German. They're kind of reluctant to even tell you that they speak German and will be very quick to point out that it's Austrian German, not German German. The language has a very distinct vocabulary, a lot of the words influenced from Eastern European nation words, and they also have their own standard dictionary set apart from the German and Swiss dictionaries. The dialects can change drastically in Austria. Sometimes it only takes about- So, all right, let me ask y'all this, right? So Austrian German versus like German. Wouldn't you, do you guys like say, could say someone that only speaks Austrian German have like a legit conversation with like someone who only speaks German and like understand each other well or is it gonna be like you understand a couple of words and otherwise it's a completely different language like how different really is it 40 kilometers traveling inward until you reach an area that has a completely different accent 
and don't even get started on those Lichtensteiners. In contrast to Germans, Austrians like to define themselves as more soft-spoken and reserved. They don't like to upset anybody, and courtesy is very highly expected in this country. Educational accomplishments and achievements are very highly prized in Austria. One thing Austrians do kind of obsess over, though, are titles. They prefer to be addressed by every title that they've obtained for themselves, <laughs> even if it equates to like 15 titles. Uh, Mr. Doctor, Chairman, Vice CEO, Chairman Otto von Schnitzelbach Krakengeschäftmeier. One thing that Austrians will tell you that the f nah, that ain't a real name. They've obtained for themselves, even if it equates to like 15 titles. Mr. Doc Schnitzel. Back, I need the hell? Your chairman, vice CEO, chairman, Otto von Schnitzelbach Krakengeschäftmeier. One thing that I. That ain't a name. Nah, nah. Hell no. Hell no. Trains will tell you that they really like to do is just taking simple walks, whether it's just for an hour to clear their head, and in any weather, whether it's great or whether it's raining. They even have a word for it, spasieren gehen. Don't be surprised if an Austrian invites you to just go for a walk. Go with it. They're a little bit more conservative in their politics, which can possibly be attributed to the growing elderly population. However, the youth have always been known to ruffle up a few controversy feathers here and there. I mean, the winner of last year's Eurovision contest was an Austrian drag queen with a beard. They keep things a little bit on the down low, however, once every so often, one notable figure comes and shines through, like Christopher Waltz and everyone's favorite bodybuilder, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Time out, I thought he was German. Yo, I didn't know he wasn't German. Which, by the way, contrary to some stupid rumors, no, the last name Schwarzenegger does not have a racist connotation behind it. Listen, listen. There, there's a reason I wasn't saying his last name. There's a reason. There was a reason. Ah, yo, the Terminator is from Austria. That's a win. Nah, that is a win. It literally just means the person from Schwarzen. Schwarzen meaning black, Ega meaning soil, black soil, fertile soil. It basically just means the place of the fertile soil. The family is descended from a long line of prosperous farmers, which is what the name refers to. Case closed! Speaking of relationships, let's talk about the friend zone. In the simplest way you I know, can put- It's crazy how much, like, different it is. Like, the newer episodes are so much more, like, finely produced, and they have, like, people from the actual countries, like, checking it out. Like, I feel like what they need to do is they need to, like, say, come back and redo some of these. Because, like, you guys also tell me a lot. Like, I'm sure we'll find in the comments people correcting certain things he says because, you know, it's older and he's not as fine-tuned as he is today. And just like it's happened in other older ones I've reacted to. So I feel like it's going to be really interesting to see the differences and like how, as we go on, say with some of the newer ones even too, how different and how more fine-tuned it is. Because it's crazy to think about that. I feel like I said that in the most stupid way possible. But I hope you guys get what I'm trying to say. Put this, this is kind of what Austria's relationships kind of look like. Now oh. shut up and dance with me! Pretty much all Damn. of Austria's best friends have some kind of a love-hate relationship with them, but eh, love always wins in the end. It's kind of crazy too because in the nicest, softest way I can put this, Austria did kind of start or influence both world wars. World War I with the attacks from the Empire on Serbia after the Archduke was assassinated, and World War II because, well, I mean, Hitler was kind of born in Austria. I mean, no Austria, no Hitler. To this day, Austria is incredibly neutral in their affairs and lies in a very interesting alliance limbo as they have neither joined NATO or the Warsaw Pact. But enough on that. In regards to their eastern neighbors, because of the whole Austro-Hungarian Empire, Austria and many of the other central and Balkan states like the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and so on, have close ties to Austria, even though historically they had lots of drama under the Habsburg dynasty. But hey, it was either the Habsburgs or the Ottomans and they hated the Ottomans. In regards to Italy, Italy has always been a huge trade partner, but of course, like mentioned before, the whole South Tyrol region thing kind of causes a little bit of tension. They aren't going to war or anything, but Austria is kind of like, look, Italy, I mean, come on, everybody there is Austrian. In terms of their best friends, Austria would kind of reluctantly say Germany, but more specifically Bavaria, the region of South Germany. Bavarians and Austrians are very similar in their culture and tradition. Some Austrians will tell you that because they get along so well, Bavaria is said to be the 10th Bundesland or state of Austria, although Bavaria alone has more inhabitants than the whole of Austria. You know that's, that's crazy. One little part of Germany has more regions than an entire country. 
That's tough. Your typical Lederhosen and Dirndl costume stuff that you see on all those Oktoberfest commercials. Yeah, that's kind of what you would attribute to Bavarian and somewhat Austrian culture, but they only do that on special occasions. I mean, if it was up to me, I would wear that stuff 24 seven, but hey, to each his own. In conclusion, Austria is kind of like the country that secretly changed the entire course of all of European history right under our noses without us even knowing about it. Here's one more picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger and get ready because Azerbaijan is coming up next. Yo! Let's go. Yo, fun times. We reacted to the Astra. Yo, I can't believe Arnold's from there. That's crazy. That's crazy. And they started both from... Damn, so basically y'all telling me Germany picked up the flag for y'all starting. That's crazy. Watch, people going to be angry as hell because I said that even as a joke. But hey, look, give me a fat ass like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, click all. You know how YouTube works. Let me know what would you like me to watch next more geography now videos leave me recommendations other videos leave me recommendations if you see a video you also want me to watch though in the comments give it a like because like it's hard for me to know like for example if i see one person wants me to watch this i might watch it whereas if i see like a hundred people want me to watch something i'm definitely gonna watch it so like give videos you want me to watch a like either way i'm out bye <laughs>